Hello and marhaba, I'm Henia and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be kicking off our video series on how to prepare misimmin, or as it's known where I live in northern Algeria, Marek. So stay tuned for today's video and the rest of the videos in this series. Misimmin is a speciality of all North African countries. They're squares of dough that have been thinly spread out and folded on themselves like an envelope and then cooked to give the appearance of a layered flaky and tender parcel. They're kind of like a cross between a pancake and a tortilla that uses the technique of making puff pastry. All the ingredients that you'll need are listed up on the screen as well as in the description box below. So Bismillah, let's go over some of the ingredients that we're going to need to prepare our masimin dough. So first we're going to need some semolina flour as you can see here. This is the same type of semolina flour that's used to make pasta. Here in Algeria and North Africa, it's called by the French name simulfin or even by the Arabic name, smidar cake. We're also going to need some all-purpose flour. You can use blood flour if you like, but it's not really necessary. We're going to need some hot water, as you can see here. The hot water is going to help us reduce the amount of smeading that we're going to do. So this is quite important in our dough. We're also going to need some salt and as well as sugar. So the amount of salt and sugar really depends on if you like to have your misame sweet or if you like to have it savory. So if you like to eat your masimin plain or with some cream cheese, I would suggest eat using about two teaspoons of salt. But if you are having a sweet tooth and you like to serve your masimin sweet, I would suggest using two tablespoons of sugar and about half a teaspoon of salt. We're also going to be using yeast in our dough so the yeast is also going to help us reduce the amount of weighting and kneading that we're going to need in our preparation of our dough so that it is much easier for us. We're also going to be kneading some butter. So the butter is going to be used for folding our misimmin. You can also use a combination of butter and vegetable oil such as a sunflower oil if you like. So we're going to begin by adding the flour as well as the semolina into our large mixing bowl in equal parts. I'm going to give that a good thorough mix, making sure that it's all incorporated well. And then I'm going to add in my dry yeast as well as my salt. I like to have my misimmin on the savory side, so I tend to add more salt than sugar. I'm going to give that a really good mix, and then I'm going to add in my water. So with this method, I'm adding all the water at the same time, opposed to the traditional method, which the water is added in little by little as you vigorously knead the dough. So we're just going to mix all the dough together until we have a rough, really sticky dough, such as what you're seeing here. And then we can just tip it out onto our countertop, onto our work surface, and begin kneading. So what I like to do, I like to just pick up the dough, with my hands and just push. Pick up and push, lift and push, lift and push. Once you get the hang of it, you can go a little bit faster and start kneading the dough a little bit. So we're gonna knead the dough until it's smooth and malleable and it doesn't stick to the board anymore. It's gonna be really nice and supple. So here I have a plastic bag, a food bag, that I've soaked in some hot water for a few minutes. So this is going to act as an incubator, which is another tip and trick that I have so that it reduces the time that kneading that I have to do in this recipe. So all I'm going to do is put my dough right into the bag, make sure I close it well, flatten it out a bit, and I can leave it on the countertop or even lift it and put it back in my mixing bowl. I'm going to cover that and leave it to rest for about 30 to 45 minutes. Here's our dough after the resting time, as you can see here. So if I open the bag, you'll see how nice and elastic it is. It's super stretchy, really elastic, smooth. It's much like chewing gum, as you can see here. So all I like to do is just fold the dough on top of it, on itself so that I have a smooth ball of dough. And then next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tray and I'm going to generously cover it with my melted butter mixture. 
You can also use a mixture of melted butter and oil if you like. And then I'm going to form balls. The size of the balls really depends on how big you like to have your misimmon. You can make them the size of golf balls and you'll have about 24 or you can make them a size about mandarins and you'll have about 20. So I'm going to finish preparing all of my little balls as you can see here and then I'm going to generously coat them with the butter mixture. And now I'm going to cover them with some plastic wrap. Again, this acts as an incubator so that our dough rests and then this is another way that it, you can reduce the stretching kneading time. I'm going to cover it with a clean kitchen towel and allow it to rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. Once our dough has rested, we can start shaping our dough. So I'm just going to take one dough at a time, making sure the rest of them are all covered. I'm going to generously apply butter to my work surface and then lay the dough on the work surface. I'm going to pat out the dough as in this slow motion I'm doing here, going in a circle, counterclockwise, clockwise motion. You want to gently spread out the dough, working from the outside, spreading out the outside, and kind of leaving the inside a little bit thick at this point because we don't want to rip our dough. Add a bit of butter on top of our dough time to time to help aid the stretching process. At this point you can gently slip your hand under and stretch the dough with your fingertips as I'm doing here. Go all around the dough stretching and pulling, stretching and pulling, but be very careful to not rip the dough. If you do find you have some really small holes in your dough, such as you can see there, it's, it's completely fine. Just make sure that you don't have really big holes. And if you do have big holes, I would just suggest forming the bowl back into a ball and letting it rest and starting again with another dough ball. Once your dough is nice and thin, take one corner of your dough and fold it on each other. And then repeat with the other side, much like when you're preparing an envelope. Now fold the other side, and then the final side of your parcel. If you find that you have a little pieces of thick dough, you can easily just tear them off with your hands, but just be careful not to rip the dough. And there you see we have our misimmon square. At this point, you can set your misimmon on a greased tray and repeat preparing the dough, or you can start. Here I have my cast iron skillet. You can also use a stodgeen that I've had preheating. I added just a little bit of butter and now I'm laying my misimmon right on top of the cast iron skillet. So we're going to be cooking our misimmon right on top of the stove top, turning occasionally, making sure that we don't brown our misimmon. You really don't want to brown your misimmon. You want it to be lightly golden brown because any dark spots will be really bitter. And we do want our misimmon to be really flexible and chewy. We don't want it to be crispy at all. So I like to just dab a little bit of the butter mixture right on top of the mersimmon. This will also help the mersimmon become really nice and buttery and chewy and just so delicious. And we, again, as I mentioned before, we don't want it to be crispy. We want it to be really chewy. Also, remember that you want to move it around the pan, checking on it, because again, we don't want it to burn. We just want it a nice golden color. We can give it a little sprinkling of butter time to time as we are turning and flipping and browning our dough. Once your misimmon is nicely golden brown, you can remove it from the pan and place it on a tray and repeat with the remaining dough. As I mentioned before, the traditional preparation of misimmon is a fairly lengthy process that requires you to vigorously knead a dough of all semolina until it's very elastic and stretchy. But as you can see in today's video, I shared with you all several tips and tricks to help you prepare this delicious North African laminated crepe in less time, less kneading, without the use of a kitchen machine. Here is our misimmon, or marek as it's called here where I live. 
I've torn a piece apart here for you guys so that you can see all the nice beautiful layers that are going on in our Massimon. Massimon is really nice and rich and really chewy, perfect for morning coffee or even uh, mint tea, coffee latte. It's really delicious plain, but also so delicious with honey, jams, confiture, Nutella, or even served in a savory way with some cream cheese spread over. It's really delicious also for making sandwiches with. I like to freeze my misimen. I like to prepare a whole batch of misimen and then layer them in single layers wrapped in plastic and then freeze them so that any time during the week when I'm really super busy I can just take a piece out or pieces depending on how much I need and then I can just heat them up on my stovetop and serve them up to the family. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and if you did don't forget to give it a like and be sure to stay tuned for the future videos in this series when I will be showing you more tips and tricks on how to prepare Miss Simmon and all its variations that we all enjoy here in North Africa. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so by hitting that subscribe button and also hitting the bell so that you don't miss out on any new video. Thank you for watching and as always, peace be upon you and see you in the next video.